And here we are on a game on Crossroads. And on Crossroads, we have none other than the OKW forces about to be duking it out. We have uh, it piloted by none other than Nos Markov. And facing off against Nos Markov, we have who? KDC. A Marcel, or actually known more better as Pure Section Spam. I don't know why he calls himself that. He's Marcel in the chat. Uh, it's Always a meme, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> I'm guessing, yeah. He used to play a lot of 2v2s with me back in the past. I, I see he plays a lot of 1v1s now. Maybe he'll play in the next tournament or something. That yeah. would be fun to see. Yeah, he's def I, I also remember him as a 2v2 player myself, actually. I, I remember facing him off in 2v2 a lot more than in 1v1s. So, you know, but he, he's adapting. Yeah, absolutely. So, interesting choices already from Markov to go for it. That two Volks into Scavenge Doctrine, you know, we'll probably see the uh, Jaeger Light Infantry. That squad is so good. It's unbelievable how strong they are with that G43. But it's actually quite interesting these days. Um, I used to expect people to open up with the Kubel all the time. Doesn't seem like they do it that often now. I don't know. What do you think about that? I think it's very different depending on play styles, really. Because um, you do see it every now and then, but it's like, you know, it's map dependent and of course playstyle. Uh, personally, I do prefer going just straight up folks. Like, you usually trade the Kobold for a folk squad, right? That's what happens. And it's a bit difficult to keep alive and if you get value, mm -hmm. you get value. But it's high risk and not a lot of reward in my book. But I know a lot of mm, players still build it. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to shy away from like the ability to repair and trade the repairs for free manpower, right? So that's that's the nice thing of going Kubel. <laughs> Not this game though. So yeah, just looking at the engagements this game, opening up from Marcel here, he tried to get some abuse going using the north green cover around the uh, the fuel point, but he got forced away by Marco playing it very well, I think. Meanwhile, he has been soft capping the far right side with the engineers, which is what you want to be doing as Soviets with this build. Yeah, it looks like pretty standard play right now, right? It's triple cons, double engineer. You probably get a flamer on one of them at the barest of minimums um, to really punish any like green cover that Markov is building. He does have a little bit up. Mm -hmm. Lots of engagements all over the map right now. Yeah, strong push here on the, the fuel of Nosmarkov. Looks like uh, Marcel is going for some resource harassment. I don't see Markov being able to hold on here. So it seems if we look at the attack map, he's going to try to trade the map control and take uh, take Marcel's fuel in position. Yeah, I like the conscript bobbing though. Conscripts. Mm -hmm. I feel like the only times they're ever going to really like win these engagements where you have to attack is when you bob them up and charge them in. And it looks like he's been doing that pretty well. You know, they've been going up against one or two squads with three, yeah. which means that you, know, you can just run up in their face and, and kill them. I'm also a huge fan Mark of the way he's split up here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of uh, Marcel here. You know, he, he goes all conscripts and takes them to the engagements. And once the engagement is won, he has splits, captures the map, and builds sandbags with each with each and one of them. It's just, it's such a quick way to get map control, you know? Just force away, and then split, and then you gather up again. But yeah, Mar Markov mm -hmm. go queuing up a fifth Folk's Grenadier here. That's quite interesting, considering he has Jagged Lights, as mentioned, in his uh, commander. Yeah, I hate that. What is he doing? What? <laughs> So, yeah. I actually <laughs> genuinely think Jaeger Light Infantry are overpowered. Yeah, and I mean, it's weird to see him not using them. I can see it from a team game perspective, but in 1v1s you do get a bit more punished uh, going Jaeger Lights. Um, oh, how so? Yeah, well, you know, the squad on its own at Vet Zero can't really stand up versus a lot of the allied infantry mainline. And uh, you also don't have a snare, and with the, the light vehicle being such a, a strong part of the meta in 1v1s, it's it's quite easy to punish. Ah, I see. Well, I noticed that, um, or I, I saw like some video where they compared like unit performance in green cover against green cover. Mm -hmm. And from, 
from what I remember, like Jaeger lights with the G43 would beat literally everything. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, so they get, good. They get the the double um, double snipe ability, right? Which is just so in, so strong in green cover because you get model drops. Exactly. So we have. So it looks like honestly, like I, I don't feel like anyone's really ahead right now. It's been a nice back and forth where people are, you know, trading points. A lot mm -hmm. of retreating from Markov. I feel like Marcel at the end of the day is a little bit more cost effective. Um, he's going to be able to tech up fast and get yeah. that T70 out soon, but he hasn't started the building yet. For sure. I totally agree. I think Markov, you know, going five false grenadiers, you really want to be seeing more success in the early game engagements if you have this many combat squads. And he's still, like, he's about to lose his resources again. He's getting harassed all over the map and. With this many combat squads and they still can't keep up, it's very poor performance and not very cost efficient, as you say. That's true. It's five Volks against three cons. I I'm actually amazed yeah. how much how far Marcel has been able to get with this. Yeah. So it's just uh, very strong engagements from um, Marcel across the board. You can see it on the screen right now. Two v one here in the garrison. So even though uh, Markov is garrisoned, right? It's actually a bad engagement for the false grenadier because he's outgunned by 10 rifles and that's not a good game. We see a sixth false grenadier in build for Markov. Nice. <laughs> I think he's memeing or something. I don't know why they sent you this replay. Obviously, there's something special about it, huh? Yeah, I'm speechless, but I, it looks like it's going to be a strong replay here, you know? Six folks, I'm looking forward to seeing how where this is going. Uh, I'm not sure if Marcel yeah. has realized what how many how many folks can do he is fighting. Uh, but this could be punished so hard by simply going T70, like even double T70, there is no AT. Yeah, but it looks like Marcel's saving up for something else, maybe taking up fast. He, he honestly might actually go for the KV-1 in this game. Um, it looks like he has enough fuel. And if you get that out early, you can d just destroy the Axis player because that thing has so much health. You can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Panzer IV. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. He hasn't picked the commander yet, so he's been missing out on a lot of like pretty damn decent abilities. He's also floating a lot here, but there we go. You, we see guard rifle. You predicted it. We see guards coming out as well, and a T70 in the queue. So no, no rush. And I agree with this. I think rushing is very risky um, because you know, if you if you don't succeed in holding the map and you try for a rush, you can you can really lose the map extremely fast. Hmm. I hate though, I hate like the small amounts of inefficiencies that we see in this gameplay. Like Marcel, he could have built that T70 a minute ago. This game oh, has yeah. only been going on for eight and a half minutes. And he could have built that T70 and had it out and about wiping models and squads so much earlier. For sure. For it's a sure. shame, really. And he also misses out uh, the punish, right? Versus this build. It, the faster you get the T70, the more punish you will, uh, you will, you will essentially do. Uh, because of Markov's build, right? Yeah. So it's even more important. Why did Markov even go scavenge? He, he hasn't used a single ability. <laughs> it's so funny. Maybe he misclicked it. Um, I'm expecting to see some uh, some Ostwins here. You know, skipping light vehicle. It's uh, Ostwind rush couldn't be happening. And Ostwind does very well versus T70. And we might see a wipe here on the combat engineers, the flamer. We already have a rebuild of Flamer in the queue for Marcel in case it goes down, and yes it does, so quick reaction there at least, you know, making sure that you're not without that extra squad. I like how he gets like six Volksgrenadier squads, but he doesn't have a single STG, and he's <laughs> floating like 200 munitions, what is happening? Yeah, you know why? Because he's not upgraded his battle group, so he can't get STG set. Wow, okay. That also he means he already has his truck out too. Yeah, he can't get tier four unless until he upgrades the battle group. So very very inefficient build here from Marco. I'm not quite sure what the what the it's plan a was. Symphony of errors. I love these kinds of games. 
But you know, once he gets that, uh, let me see, let me count here. So that's 90, so he has about 80 fuel. He's actually one minute away from Ostwind in terms of fuel, but he needs the manpower, and this racket then is going to delay him for quite some time, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's funny how um, oftentimes, like, you see people get punished just for, like, you know, spending their manpower too aggressively, right? Especially when you reach, like, the 10 minute, 9 minute oh. mark, you do need to start banking up, being careful. Sorry to interrupt you there, but Raketten literally just missed the killing blow on the T70. But, you know, maybe that's the yeah. expected outcome from a Raketten. So, maybe it's not Never that lucky. <laughs> Did you know that a uh, Jagdpanzer has a smaller target size than a T70. Oh, I did not know that. Even without veterancy? Are you sure? I think so. Oh, yeah, someone was telling me that. I forgot to check it, but because I know, I'm I know, it, throw I know it out it, there. I know it has a survivability vet. I, but I think vet two. Yeah, yeah, where it gets like 800 health. Yeah. Instead of 640. Two connections there on the T70, forcing it back to repairs. Meanwhile, we have uh, finally some aggression here from Markov getting some map control, but what is that mass retreat about? What was he scared of? Not quite sure. Yeah, I don't know, honestly. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it looks like that side of the map's going out the window. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this Ostwind is just so delayed right now. Um, I don't see it coming out before T-34 anymore. <laughs> Yeah, he obviously wants to get that Schwer set up, like, aggressively protecting the, the cutoff and the area in front of it, but that's just not happening. Yeah, also, and if he's going for Ostwin, right, he's not going to instantly upgrade it, which put it at risk. Uh, it's not going to be defending until he gets the upgrade on it too, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Marcel here with a Maxim, maybe a misclick? I feel like a... A Zisk gun would have made a lot more sense in this scenario, you know? Like, something's gotta be coming. He hasn't seen a single vehicle this entire game. Yeah, I think he's uh, feeling quite confident with the, the map control he has been holding, though. That's the only thing I can think of, you know? Um, no snares yet either, but... Ooh, that's Schwerer, though. Is that in vision from the guards? That's not in range. Okay, so he does not have line of sight on the Schwerer. Eh? Very so risky. greedy. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, look at the coverage though. My god, that thing covers even the VP. It's insane. It's a very nice place. He put he must have like um pre-practiced or is very used to this position. <laughs> Most likely. But you know, double 80 gun, uh, close to the hedgerow, you can shoot from the road. Uh, that's a good point. Marcel here, he might be going for a KV-1 at this point. He does have the fuel. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit of manpower before he reaches that. Yeah, good observation. No retreating combat engineers yet, though. Might see that after this fuel is captured to take up. Get those seven-man conscripts going as well. Oh, he hasn't taken up yet. Oh, I didn't even realize. I thought he did. My bad. Yeah, still no Ostwind in queue here. Oh, he actually upgraded the Schwerer, so he's not going Ostwind then. Okay, interesting. I thought surely this would be a, an Ostwind build, but now I'm even more confused why he picked uh, Scavenge. <laughs> I, I don't think he's even scavenged anything this game either. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's been, been nothing. Yeah. You know, huh. fun funnily enough though, we were talking about repair speeds earlier. This Doctrine does have uh, Ferro uh, Salvage, so... All these false grenadiers are, false grenadiers are potential repair squads. That's true. We do see a conscript I did not like that flame grenade. Ah, it killed the conscript, right? That, that's true, that's true. Alright, alright. I like it a little bit more. <laughs> the blob is coming really strong though at this point. It's a yeah. lot of volks. It's a lot of manpower bleed if you ever have to get retreat. Get retreating or like, you know, the T-70 is still bleeding him like a stuck pig. Yeah, oh my god, it's painful. I, I must say though, once again, Marcel, the inefficiency here, you know, he could be punishing so much harder if he wasn't floating 700 manpower. Like, half this game he has been floating this amount of resources and, you know, if he's just slightly faster on these macro decisions, he would be a lot further ahead, I think. 
Yeah, absolutely true. I still feel like he's been pretty much ahead this entire game, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Markov is supposed to be ahead, at least on paper. He has had more units. He's had, you know, better, like, abilities available to him, right? Infiltration tactics, for example, we haven't seen once. Mm -hmm. But he just doesn't make it work. I don't know. It's usually just running into green cover. It's usually... I don't even know. Just being too scared with all of his movements. He retreats so early. It's almost a shame. Yeah. And then he really pays the price for that. We do see uh, Pansy for j in the queue right now, though. Earlier than I expected, I must say. But it's also because Marcel is saving up for the KV one here. Um, which is slightly delayed as well, because Marcel picked up a second guard squad. Yeah, that's true. And now we're seeing like the, the game change, right? We're in that new phase where everything suddenly revolves around who uses that medium tank better than the other. Mm -hmm. I'm calling the KP-1 medium tank, honestly, because it's like, I don't think it's super heavy. Oh, I disagree. Right now, that's the only thing. I, well, right now, it's the only thing that Marcel has to go up against this, uh, this, this Panzer IV. Oh, yeah. And the, the army of force grenadiers. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, that's true, that's true. But that, that's in the fine print, right? Supply sector under attack. But yeah, Panzer IV is revealed. Did that just take out half the folks? I think there was some friendly fire there. That's pretty uh, unlucky. Oh, no it wasn't. Never mind. <laughs> Must have been the flamer then. Mm. I do like here though, right, he's uh, supporting it with the sweeper, you know, spots two mites. Don't shoot that mine when the storm pioneer is sitting on it. Nice. <laughs> that was scary. Yeah. Panzer IV is going to be pretty scary, I think, in this situation. It's just so like, it's really, really good at like chasing down units. Maybe getting like those really, really powerful alpha strikes where you knock off like three or four models in one shot, and it moves around so quickly. It's really a excellent jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see how Marcel can deal with it. He really. PTRS is only a small stopgap. Maybe we'll see a button s just to like slow it down a little. I don't know, but yeah, I think he already has the counter in queue here. You got the KV one, which is the the best Panzer IV killer of all time. You know, in in lockdown, it actually beats the P4J even if the P4J is on its rare. So yeah, the, we'll see here. The P4J is of course also supported by the Raketen, so. Uh, could potentially see uh, some 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 plays here by Marco. Yeah, I feel like the KV one against Panzer IV J matchup is so like it's the most random RNG based and slow fight of all time. It's just bounce, 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 bounce. You know. <laughs> you say that, but I, I think not enough credit is put in the KV one. It actually beats the P four J by quite a large margin if uh, if they're in a vacuum. Okay, we'll have to see. Yeah. P4J, that guy, that sucker has like panther level armor. <laughs> so does the KV one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's just the, the HP pool, you know? It's just, it's like almost twice of the P4J, so. Yeah, we have the KV one re reveal here. Raketten is in position. Maxi might get go down here. It's very really clumped up. Takes a huge hit from the Panzer IV. Not quite enough to, to get a deep through, though. Yeah, and honestly, these Volks might just be turning into a liability at this point. They're not doing much, except getting a whack a whack a mold by the KV-1. Raquette and forced to retreat. Uh, Marcel could just go in here. What can Markov do? He needs to just run. He also has the off map available if he wants to. He chooses to run away instead. I guess he's fearing the snare. He might uh, think there is something heavier lurking in behind Markov's line. But of course, as we know, there, there ain't much. Yeah, but the snare will give him a small reprieve. At least he'll be able to get away. Lots mm -hmm. of bounces. Nobody's dying. I really don't think either of these players are going to lose their tanks anytime soon. It's just a, the time to kill is just so unbelievably long. 
maybe like a double Raketan um, battery would, would have been really good in this case, right? Support that sucker with the P Panzer IV and, um, you know, you, you can knock that sucker, that KV-1 out in like a couple volleys. I think, you know, he has the fuel here. He could go for a JP4 would be very nice in this position, actually. Or just save up for a Panther. I think both options are very solid. Uh, Marcel, most likely going to pick up a Sis here. Uh, could just go for a 76 as well, uh, or even save for an SU-85, we'll see, but I think all those options are really solid from him as well. We do see the 76, mm. okay. Uh, I like that, that's probably what I would have gone for as well. Uh, just win the attrition yeah. game, essentially. Yeah, and I feel like also when you go for this particular commander, you're um, a lot less afraid of AT guns than you would normally be. Because the this IO-2 strafing run is really, really, really strong. Oh yeah, for sure. Unsung hero of this commander, in my opinion. Yeah, it, I remember when it used to be total trash, but then like they had that commander update where um, they went back and they buffed all the total trash abilities. And this one really got the good end of the stick. Mm -hmm. We did see it being used right now, but dodged by Markov. Uh, it also used to actually be a, um, a loiter uh, before they changed it to a strafe. Yeah, KV-1 actually in a bad position here. It's showing its red to the Raketan and the Panzer IV. Just, he just needs to turn it around. He can't run. Just turn it around. Use your front. T-34-76 is turning around. Could see the T-70 coming this direction as well to uh, sit on top of the Raketan. But as you see here, KV-1, even with its rare, is actually beating the P-4 <laughs> Raketan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, KV-1 is just such a beast in this matchup. Oh, so many bounces! But yeah, ooh, Raketan gets one more hit in on the T-34. Uh, he's just waiting for the snares now, but it's going to cost Markov. The KV-1 is going back in, and these, uh, these Claw MG huge shot on the folks goes down. T-70 is here as well. And Markov is on full retreat, losing a Folks Grenadier, and his Sturmpio also went down somehow, I'm totally missed that. Yeah, 30 pop against 66 tells a big story here, and yeah, Marcel's gonna be repairing for like a thousand years. <laughs> but when he's done repairing, it's gonna be pure pain for Markov. Yeah. I must apologize though. I Marcel actually lost some squads there too. He lost a combat engineer, a con, and a guard squad somehow. I totally missed that. Yeah, it gets really hard to like pay attention to everything else going on the map, especially when like your tanks are dying. You really tend to like um, you know laser focus in on them in particular and like try to sneak out to every tiny little movement you can. I feel like a lot of players have that issue. I I honestly do as well. Marcel probably did in this case. Where you just tunnel vision, you don't see anything else, and they use a lot. But thankfully, Markov lost more. Yeah. Panther comes out. I'm not sure I actually like this Panther decision. I would have preferred uh, P4J and then get another P4, to be honest. But we'll, we'll see if we can get something done here. You know, uh, T34, KV1 is not fully repaired. Could go for a ram or something. Just to stop this from happening. But no, KV1 does go down. So very nice there. Uh, interestingly, you know, Markov does not have any repairs on the field if this gets snared, but he could always just get the repair upgrade on his Force Grenadiers with uh, this commander. So, that is. Yeah, Marcel doesn't even have snares unlocked yet. Tisk, tisk. Really? I didn't even know that. <laughs> Pro gamer strats, man. Yeah. You gotta get every little advantage you can in fuel. <laughs> Who needs AT <laughs> grenades? We do have a SIS gun though coming out for Marcel. I think that's a solid choice. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing like one of the problems with the Panther is that you need like five or six pens to kill it. You're never gonna get that with the T34, mm -hmm. and yeah. not even with a KV1. Um, so you really need to like somehow snare it, have it hit a mine, something like that, bang that sucker down with a with a ZIS gun, that kind of thing. Totally. Uh, Otherwise, I would just be forced to repair, and, and that's basically it, to be honest. You could say SU-85 here, but it's not a perfect uh, perfect solution either, because the Panther will actually deal some damage to infantry. Um, 
while almost being impossible to kill even with an SU-85, so... We do so see the Siskan being revealed here. T-34 is actually very low, Raketten is in position. It's not firing though, it's forced to retreat. Could even go down here. Panther delivering one more blow. It's forced back now though. Let's see here. Does Markov have any repair upgrades? Not yet. So he can't still yeah. not repair the Panther? Yeah, an SU-85 would be an interesting choice. I feel like SU-85s are one of the most skill-intensive units to use. It's actually quite interesting. They're so, like, incredibly sluggish and annoying to micro. And if you do fuck up even a little, you, you expose even your side to the, to the Panther. That mm -hmm. guy is just going to run straight at you and uh, circle strafe you to death. Yeah. So, truly a high skill choice. I would love to see it, honestly. It would make sense. I think you have to be very, very careful. I honestly think it's part of why conscripts are so good. It's because if they're matched with an SU-85, what you can do is you can just, you know, just keep them close, just babysit. And if there's a dive, just sprint and snare. You only need one connection, right? So, uh, makes the SU-85 quite a threat, because then that, that means you can't dive him. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, if I was in Marcel's position here, or if you were in Marcel's position here, would you go for an SU-85 next? I I would actually, yeah. I, I think um, the, the main way that I would want to win this game is by killing the Schwer. It's mm -hmm. not honestly that hard. Um, it's pretty exposed. You can hit it from like the middle of the uh, the map. And SU-85 really helps with like that particular goal. Oh yeah. Right, focus sight, you know, maybe you hang around the center, you have your Ziskin come up as well, and that that's that headquarters will die in like 30 seconds. Yeah, good call. So we have T7 and T34 here just bleeding the OKW forces. We see another false grenadier actually go down here, and the other one there is another one very low in the center. Uh, but we have Siskan in position to hurt this Panther. No snares in close proximity though, it seems to be diving for the T-70. He wants some revenge for those folks in here. The T-70 does have 32 kills, I mean that guy has really been cost efficient. Yeah, you know, that's just light vehicles in 1v1s. They are generally extremely strong if they if they are left um, unharmed. We have a yeah, and that's gun from Marcel. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and that that that's an interesting thing about 1v1s compared to like team games, right? Where um, the level of effort that you have to put in to kill light vehicles is far, far higher. Good players, they they're not gonna lose them unless you surprise them with a the snare, you surprise them with something. It always usually has to be a surprise. It's not that easy to surprise people these days, right? You need a mine, you need a a, a funky snare behind a hedgerow. Maybe a double AT gun ambush, that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, and you know, even then with the double AT gun ambush, it's not a guarantee, right? Because at a very low target size of the, the light vehicles. Yeah, and then half of them have smoke too, and then suddenly oh, yeah. the attack ground. We did have two connections here, so, uh, you know, T7 going to lethal range, but driving on the road, he can just accelerate fast as the wind, essentially. And just disappear in the in the shadows of line of sight or fog of war rather Supply lines have been cut. yeah i would actually say that the t70 does feel like one of the clunkier light vehicles my my personal favorite is the uh m20 and the 222 they're just oh, yeah. so like nimble you know oh yeah for sure i'm a bit surprised actually that marcel went for the second sis here uh, I guess his uh, thought process is uh, Panther is anti-vehicle, so don't build vehicle. But I, I still think an SU-85 or a KV-1 would have been a way more consistent choice, personally. Yeah, and, and we'll see it soon as well. I feel like that's the natural next unit he's going to get. I mean, he has so much fuel right now. Maybe an ML-20, but I, I'd be really skeptical if he wants to invest the manpower in that. Yeah, um, I, I really hope that we will see an ML-20. Yeah. <laughs> would but be funny, though. I'm just though. saying, Markov, Markov has been sitting here behind green cover for, like, 
the last five to ten minutes, and uh, you know the only little effort he spends in attacking is just harassing the uh, the south VP once in a while with one squad. It's mm -hmm. not exactly a winning strategy, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you know, Mark. I feel like. Oh, we have a second panther coming in. <laughs> okay, this is uh, uncommon for 1v1s. You know, six folks into double panther, it's not every day. <laughs> it's an interesting strat. Double panther is really scary, though. Their ability to, like, snipe you from barely vision range is pretty, pretty uncomfortable and almost unfair. Yeah, and you know, a dive with this, even the double sis gun, right? Because Markov has the uh, one of five millimeter howitzer barrage off map, and with his munition float, you can't really ignore it, because that thing gets better and better the more munitions you actually have in the bank. So he's almost reaching 300 munitions here. That's going to almost double this barrage, the amount of shells being fired. So you can really not sit in, uh, sit in this uh, without feeling the, the damage. Yeah, but, so, I mean, it's so interesting to think about, like, how the game changes when you have two Panthers, right? Like, now, at this point, the T-34 oh, yeah. is total trash. Oh. KB-1 is total trash also at this point. I think These guns are suddenly the entire um, centerpiece of the Soviet strategy. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think the T-34 is actually quite okay in this matchup, because the, it has the trade potential, you know? If you just ram, you got the double 80 gun follow-up, and uh, preferably an SU-85. As we see here, there's a KV-1 from Marcel, so that's obviously a misread, and I don't think the second mm. Panther has been revealed yet. Um, mm, that's true. But it, it, has that, yeah. it does have that trade potential where the Panther player might die before a kill, and then you, you end up trading instead. Uh, I did not like that. Yeah, I think that was a waste on the 105, to be honest, using that on the Maxim. But we have a huge push here. Panthers looks like they're going for base inspection. KV-1 there, though, to stop the the Panthers. Sis guns on the retreat path of the Panthers. And like mentioned, no. it seems this T-34 is going to trade for a Panther, potentially. KV-1 needs to get out of there though, it's just sitting sitting duck, it looks like. Meanwhile, T-70 is going in for the dive on the Folks blob. Does go down to Snare and Raketten. KV-1 seemingly not trading the Panther there. Lots of uh, inaccurate uh, uh. engagement. Huge IL-2 coming in, taking out Almost all of Markov's <laughs> forces. What was that? <laughs> what the fuck? When Panther uh, goes right, down so to one guy only has tanks. <laughs> and it the is other guy one. only has infantry. Two CIS guns moving up. Tier 4 could go down here. Panther could go down here. Markov remaining with two infantry squads and a Panther. Ostwind is in queue, what an excellent choice, to be honest. Yeah, you don't pay attention for just a couple seconds, that one <laughs> strafe comes in and wipes you to the floor. I mean, that's, I said that as a good fucking ability, and my <laughs> god, is it good. You know, he was kind of asking for it, right? <laughs> but yeah, Panther goes down here, and the tier 4 is about to go, go down as well. Uh, Ostwind is about to hit, but what can Ostwind do versus this? You know, looks pretty game. He can't cancel the Ostwind though. Cancelling Ostwind means no vehicles at all, so... Yeah, tier 4 goes down. Ostwind hits the field, but... The army is missing from Markov. <laughs> and it looks like someone might have quit the game here. I don't see any further actions, and yeah, there we go, sync error detected, so game goes to Marcel, <laughs> what a game though, very interesting. Yeah, it's it, it's an, it's interesting to see also like how um, the diminishing returns that you get from going so many Volks, you know, it, it, it shouldn't have been that bad, 
but it was pretty bad. I don't know. It, it really felt a lot weaker than um, you would normally expect with that I, kind of infantry blob. Yeah, I don't think that was build though. I think it was just Markov not really, you know, going on the aggression there at the start. Because looking at the points held, you know, Marcel was equal or ahead at all times the first 15 minutes. And that's three conscripts versus versus six Volks Grenadiers. Um, of course, he did get the T70, but that was quite late. I think it was around the 11 minute mark, um, which you can also see in the map control um, graph, I suppose. But yeah, strange build, but very entertaining, I will admit that. You're absolutely right. All right, I'm going to get off. Good casting one game. Oh, yeah. Thanks for joining, dude. It was fun. Yeah, no problem. We'll do more. Of course, chat, if you want to find out this who this lovely voice belongs to, it's uh, none other than KDC. Follow him on Twitch, Twitch chat, or, or Twitch.tv slash KDC.